Well, as we have a data, a economic data filtering through to many economies of late, also earnings reports for the first half have been streaming in just as fast. And Kenya's co uh, Kennel Cobal was one of those over in Kenya yesterday that released numbers. The company showing that it swung to profitability in the first half, and certainly the company's CEO MD uh, painting a very rosy outlook for the road ahead. And uh, joining us now from our studios in Nairobi, Kenya, is Jacob Segman. MD off the company to run us through uh, the company's position right now and prospects moving forward. Thanks so much, Jacob, for joining us this afternoon. Well, we've seen Kennel Cobalt swing uh, to first half profit, as I was saying earlier, profit of 1.73 billion shillings after a 611 million shilling loss last year. Run us through the major drivers uh, for earnings growth over this period. Thank you, Alicia. Uh yeah, we, we are quite uh, encouraged by these uh, results. Um, uh, it's a fact that uh, it is a major turnaround vis-a-vis uh, -vis the first uh, half of 2009. But if you look at it carefully on yearly basis, actually the turnaround uh, took place uh, in second half of 2009. And the results uh, reflected in 2010 first half is um, a spillover and continuation of the great uh, uh, performance. Uh, the main drivers, uh, of course, are to do with uh, our overall group uh, inventories uh, position at the beginning of the year, um, coupled with the fact that uh, relatively oil prices internationally were stable uh, and relatively uh, stable uh, uh, pricing locally, mainly in countries outside uh, Kenya, uh, coupled with another interesting factor, which is to do with certain business lines that performed extremely well this uh, first uh, half of the year, namely um, export, non-fuel, uh, lubricants, LPG, mm -hmm. uh, and certain other small business lines. Well, let's get into those business lines because the focus uh, for the company seems to be the strategy uh, where the focus is on high margin businesses in particular. What exactly are you targeting there? Is that, a comple is that in completely in reference to the aviation industry? Okay, uh, aviation, uh, again, I'm sure you are well aware of the fact that uh, last year and actually in the last uh, um, two or three years has been very uh, tough for the downstream uh, players in this sector. We managed to turn it around and actually for the first half of this year, we turned it from a loss-making business into a profit-making uh, business, not as high margins as we would have uh, like to see, but still uh, above water, which is uh, good for us. Now, the, what are the other, uh, I would call them niche or business lines with high margins? As I said, they, they are um, export, uh, uh, LPG. LPG, we have mm -hmm. uh, invested substantially this year. Uh, we have just commissioned the second uh, modern uh, storage and uh, filling line in uh, Kigali. In two months, we are about to commission uh, uh, the third plant in uh, Kampala. We are in the progress of uh, doing the same in Dar es Salaam, and uh, we are just about to launch LPG in uh, Addis Ababa and uh, Lusaka. Th Basically, we are focusing on this business, which we know uh, they are not too much relying on certain infrastructure efficiencies in, uh, or deficiencies in uh, Kenya. Namely, you know well the situation with the refinery, you mm -hmm. know well the situation with the Kenya pipeline. Let's, let's talk about uh, that uh, situation with the refinery and the pipeline because concern is out there despite all the, you know, the positivity uh, you're putting out there that when it comes to uh, inefficiencies of both the pipeline and the refinery over in Kenya, uh, we've got issues that continue to plague and could possibly hamper earnings potential moving forward. So what are some of the developments that are unfolding there and uh, how have you been able to paint such a rosy outlook with so much still up in the air? Okay. Um, luckily for the Kenokobil group, uh, we um, 
launched our new uh, strategy of uh, expanding beyond the Kenyan border. Though we, as you know, we are a Kenyan company, a public uh, traded company on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, we started moving out already in 1999. So we, we have really seen the, the, the fruits coming from this movement. And if you look at the, our books, and you realize that actually the contribution coming from businesses and subsidiaries outside Kenya vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, 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 the Kenyan operation uh, has changed completely. Uh, we see them contributing much more. Mm -hmm. And of course, b uh, coupled with uh, focusing on business lines which have not uh, or do not need to rely on these uh, infrastructure I I I inefficiencies, uh, so we do uh, believe that we have good reason to be bullish about uh, uh, the years ahead. And you can see in our results, uh, uh, profitability has, uh, has really improved. The, the GP uh, almost doubled as percentage of the net sales. Um, uh, our share, uh, shareholders' equity has, has gone up for the first time above uh, 12 billion shillings, which is about 150 million US dollars. Uh, so we have good reasons to believe this trend will continue mm -hmm. and that co group will uh, make headway in uh, many other uh, countries and business lines in, uh, in Africa. So Let me just, uh, uh, sorry to sorry. interrupt, but uh, quite a reliance then on the subsidiary. Spelling what then exactly for your Kenya operations specifically, Jacob? Uh, because and the kind of contribution that these operations locally are going to be making to your profit line moving forward? Hey, it's a good point. In, in actually, in 2009, if I'm not mistaken, uh, subsidiaries outside Kenya uh, contributed over 50% uh, to our bottom line, uh, over 50%. And then if you take the other business lines that I, I, I've, I've referred to, uh, that are not relying too much on uh, the infrastructure in Kenya, and uh, probably will end up with something like uh, 75 to 80 percent of the business uh, of the uh, bottom line. So that is why we are focusing very much uh, mm -hmm. uh, on on a, a development of our group outside Kenya. Does not mean that we gave up on on our future in Kenya, not at all. We, yeah. we do believe we are Kenyans. We intend to continue investing, and we, that's what we are doing. And we believe at the end of the day, uh, uh, the, the industry will uh, uh, will be put in order, and things will will uh, be aligned, and we'll see uh, the industry um, uh, going back to normality like it used to be some years back. And well, I've been in this industry for many years, so I know very well. Well, a new target is going to be Zimbabwe. We've heard the group mention that earlier this week, Mozambique and Zimbabwe strongly on the agenda. When it comes to Zimbabwe, we know uh, that Ken Alcoba went through this failed joint bid for BP and Shell's assets in the Southern African country. What lessons were learned there? And how do you see Ken Alcoba growing in Zimbabwe, specifically moving forward? Are we looking at organic growth or acquisition? growth in that territory yeah it's a uh, interesting point uh, I think in our previous interview I mentioned that uh, we hit a snack on uh, on this uh, deal we had uh, we actually signed the SPA with the uh, Shell and BP on the Zimbabwean uh, uh, business uh, that was uh, through a joint venture with the um, uh, Petronas with engine and um, Unfortunately, we could not uh, meet the regulatory approval, uh, and I must admit that being an African uh, company, we, we, we still have a lot of things to learn, and we learned that uh, it is uh, complex, and we are trying to uh, uh, find a way uh, in agreeing with the government on the way forward, the government of Zimbabwe. And now, how do we intend to, uh, to do it? Um, we are still uh, looking at the assets there. Uh, we have uh, uh, gone to the extent of yeah. uh, uh, progressing on a new agreement on 100% of this business, and we believe we'll reach an understanding with the uh, Zimbabwean government on uh, the indigenization uh, plan. 
Uh, as you know, it is over five years, so we believe we reach a, a, a common ground on mm -hmm. how to, to implement this uh, new well, law. Well, certainly, uh, Jacob, we will be tracking developments there as they unfold. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Of course, Ken Alcobel said uh, in its statement yesterday that it will not pay an interim dividend as management awaits the conclusion of some unspecified mergers and acquisitions deals as well. So it will certainly be an interesting space moving forward.